This video is a continuation on a previous video, uh, giving a brief tutorial on the Shapely Python package. If you have not seen the first video, I recommend that you go look at that one first. So in the previous video, I was walking through this test snippet code, and we are now here. So when we left off, we had this uh, multi-line string four geometries. Let's take a look at that first by plotting just the coordinates of it. So here we'll see that we have a bunch of lines for the outer polygon. We have some intermediate polygons and some uh, lowest level polygons. And when I mean top and low level, I simply just mean sort of containing. Now, one thing to note here is that at this point, these are just lines. These are not polygons. It's a multi-line string. If you were to do polygon operations between these lines, like intersection or uh, unionizing, uh, you wouldn't really get anything because two lines that are unioned or intersected is really just where those specific lines interact. You need to first have a polygon. So generally when you are dealing with uh, layout is, is, is my main interest. Uh, what you need to do is take a bunch of wires or the polygons re representing those wires and union all, them, all of them together to make a uh, one solid uh, polygon. So for this operation, the shapely cascaded union uh, is a good uh, a good bet. So here what we'll do is we will polygonize this multi-line string, which as I mentioned in my previous video, uh, you'll have the top level polygon with two holes. You'll have an intermediate polygon with one hole uh, and so on for all of them. If you cascaded union them all together, you will, by plotting the results of that here, you will simply get one large rectangle, okay? So in this next section, I'll talk a little bit about one of the goofinesses of uh, the polygonize function. If polygonize only finds one polygon, it will return a polygon. If polygonize has multiple, then it will return a multi-polygon, and that can be problematic. So here I am taking two rectangles, which these are the same rectangles as in the beginning of my previous video. I polygonize them. Since there are two different uh, polygons, it will give me a multi-polygon. And I unionize those together. That doesn't really do much. I have this union. Too. Okay, so now I want to take the multi-polygon constructor. It takes a union too. So, so let's look at some of the uh, things that were returned here. So union two, here we have a multi-polygon up, okay? If I multi-polygon that, that's really just a copy construct. If you take if you take the list of that, you end up with two polygons. If you take the list of if you take the list of the original, you get two polygons. As to be expected because we are just a copy construct. However, if we were to take the first cascaded union, we have only a polygon. You can't iterate a polygon, okay? Polygon object is not iterable. Make that into, so how do we take the output of cascaded union and make it into some object that can always be handled the same you, so that you don't really care if there's one polygon or if there's more than one polygon? Well, here we could simply take whatever is the output and put it in a list, list structure. So we'll plot the poly there and do show. Okay, so that prints, fine. So then here, we'll do the same thing with union two, right? So, because again, here we're trying to take the output of any cascaded union, regardless of how many objects it returns, and be able to handle them in a uniform manner. So before we did multi-polygon, taking a list of things, here we're going to do plot polys, also with a list of things. In this case, the list has multiple things in it. Plot show that as well, but here we have only one rectangle. What happened? Well, the multi-polygon interface, well, if we come here to the Shapely manual and look for the multi-polygon constructor, we'll see that it takes a sequence of the exterior followed by a list of holes. So coming back to our thing here, here we have a list of two objects. The first one is interpreted as the exterior the second one is, is interpreted as the whole. And even if we were to look at the interiors of this object, so again, it's a list, right? There's one object. We look at the zero element and we try to look at the interiors of it. And once again, list, as always, it's empty. And of course, that kind of makes sense because the two objects were not overlapping and the whole has to be inside of the inner boundary. So that's not really a solution to being able to uniformly handle the result of cascaded. Now I've tried a number of things and in the end, I found that I basically just had to check 
whether or not the thing is a polygon or if it's something else, if it's a multi-polygon. Um, I know that this is not really a Pythonic way of doing it, but there you go. And so then finally you have to do this plot polys in two different ways. One final note, if I have this multi-line string here, it's created and then let's print it out for our viewing pleasure. So here we have two overlapping polygons. Now, when we polygonize this, remember that we are not doing a union. We are simply taking lines and trying to make polygons out of them. So in this case, if we were to plot the result of polygonizing these lines, we'll see here we have one from zero to 10, and then we have another one here from five to 15, right? So even though they are overlapping, you do get two separate polygons. It tries to use the edges. It, it tries to keep all of the edges that you have. So in any case, I hope you found this helpful. As always, please leave any comments, uh, feedback to help me uh, make better videos.